Good morning, Leticia. You're in charge of the international strategic perspective at PSA Pouchon Citroën. Your company is the French champion of patent registration, which proves your very strong commitment to innovation. We're going to meet to understand how innovation works within your company. Could you first introduce yourself and tell us what you do within the company? Okay. First, thank you for asking me about this subject, which is very important to me and really essential in my career path with PSA. It's been 15 years since I started to work for the group. First, I was in charge of the survey, which gave me the opportunity to set up, in particular, a market segmentation at an international level. Then, as a marketing manager, I assisted in the innovation field, and especially in the disruptive innovation field, still for PSA. Then, in 2010, I created the International Strategic Perspective Department. Like you said, I'm head of the perspective for the PSA group, attached for the central marketing office. As such, my mission is to situate the PSA group in relation to the big societal stakes, especially on mobility, <coughs> in order to drive the group's strategy. But, on the other hand, I also have the responsibility to guide the group on the basis of the aspirations and the needs of the future clients so we can generate innovative concepts. Of course, innovation is a decisive strategic access for the company, and I'd say, especially nowadays, with a special context in which the vehicle manufacturers are facing decisive challenges, such as the environment and the urban life, we must find completely new solutions. And I use Armand Hutchell's concept of intensive innovation, which means that beyond the increase of innovation rhythm, we focus on multidimensional innovation, and we deal not only with the object, the answers, terms of product and service, but also with the question of the value model and the integration of the object in a social and anthropological concept. A typical thing for us as vehicle manufacturers is to consider the mutation, the fact that we shifted from automobile designers or producers to a profession proposing a real mobility with intelligence. We're really dealing with a mutation. So, the group is committed to this type of thought and needs very efficient tools and new approaches to use them. In order to develop them, we set up a framework of close cooperation between strategic marketing and the innovation office. And among all these methods that you mobilize, how, how do you define your innovation target? So, the clientele we target, I could say they are identified mostly by a clientele segmentation process. We developed this approach several years ago. At a global level, we rely on qualitative and quantitative surveys based on processes which associate a local and global view. We always start with local studies which give us information and insight into local specificity, and then we find crossovers, and we highlight crossovers which allow us to build a global landscape. And these clientele segmentations were designated like Russian dolls, which allow us to work on more or less accurate levels according to the context or the topic. In concrete terms, we can divide the whole world demand into nine territories of different customers. In these nine territories will come, for example, in Europe, in 140 different profiles. This is used for just a vice-quick overview. 
In this MOOC, we focus especially on the persona method. And in the case of this segmentation, following this segmentation, do you use this method? And for what purpose? Y yes, we use the persona method. Since we work with clientele segmentation, we've always needed to give life to these studied segments. I think that for two years now, we used the personas because the process seemed interesting and efficient, rather concrete. So why do we need personas today, especially today? Well, in the context that I previously described, we need to make a number of diverse stakeholders work together, our clients, our advisors, our designers, our decision makers, to mobilize various competences, our engineers, our designers, marketeers, economists, and to ensure that everyone can communicate with each other. We must develop a common culture, a common language, but also a common time frame. And you can say that this common language is the client and his context of life. And the personas allow us to tell stories in a simple and personified way. It's also accurate, very credible, and dynamic and a little fun. They embody volumes of information which is dense and can be quite boring. Could you give us an example of personas you use at work? Well, yes, we created Camille. Camille is 40 years old. She lives alone with two kids who are 8 and 12 years old. She lives in a small town near Narbonne called Sijon. Camille doesn't have a simple life because raising two children alone is not an easy task. So she faces financial constraints and constraints in organizing her schedule. But she allows herself to take some time because she's rather into sharing and into new technologies. Mm, what could I say? She's seeking for some pleasure and magic in her life with her family and friends. So, six months ago, she bought a new car, a small car. Not very expensive, but brand new, because she needs to know she can rely on it and feel reassured. Reassured whatever happens. Therefore, she chose a small, cheap, sturdy, solid car. But she also wanted something bright, fancy, a little techno, well, a bit like her personality. And thanks to Camille, we managed to make all our collaborators understand what are the expectations of these type of small car users. So, if I'm understanding you're right, in order to create your persona, Camille, you dealt with qualitative and quantitative information you gathered during your clientele segmentation. Yes, yes, because our personas aren't totally fictive characters. There are archetypal customers, so, so we build a profile, rather archetypal, by using all the instruments available. You can notice that our personas are not just consumers with needs, habits, and a budget. Um, they're also citizens designed with a life context, a private context, a social context. We describe their aspirations, their values, their lifestyle, before highlighting their mobility and their relation to an automobile. Thank you very much, Leticia, and I hope we will have another meeting very soon. Okay, thank you.